Saturday morning, November 7th. For the first time in what felt like forever, I, I felt like I could finally take a deep cleansing breath. And then Sunday, November 8th, I've had a, a handful of pills and was desperately hoping I could finish the entire bottle. Well, such is the life of a bipolar person who also happens to be politically active on the down low. I'm a grade school teacher. I've been married to a pastor for 26 years and I've successfully raised two independent young adults. While my double covert life might not be as much as my anxiety ridden mind makes it out to be, I am the first lady of a politically conservative, practically Trump worshiping congregation. Now, that doesn't mean I'm like a ultra liberal feel the burn kind of Democrat, um, <laughs> but I, I am a dyed in the wool yellow dog Democrat. So basically that means since I've been able to vote, I have voted for two Clintons and uh, twice for Obama and half heartedly for Al Gore um, and then desperately for Joe Biden. I, I, I mean, I, I consider myself moderately liberal, okay? I am pro-choice, I'm pro-LGBTQ, I'm pro-immigration and pro-BLM, I'm pro-science, and pro-climate, and just overall, I'm pro-kindness. <laughs> I mean, clearly, I'm going to hell in my handbasket. <laughs> well, this brings me back to Sunday afternoon. Well, actually, the, the night before. I mean, I was feeling so free that I finally was able to say out loud to myself, we won. And we really had. And, and I was feeling so reckless that I actually made a Facebook post by screenshotting the last words in the Harry Potter series, all was well. And above it I put, democracy has finally won. And it really had. I mean, after every obstacle that had been thrown its way, democracy finally won. And then it all came crashing down. I shouldn't have been surprised. I had long flirted with the dangers of posting liberal views, but I refrained because of my husband's position in the church. But that night, I decided to throw caution to the wind. And then I opened up Pandora's box within a few hours and I was on the door hinges of hell. You know, I got barraged with the same tired evangelical talking points. Democrats don't hold Christian values, and Democrats are against God. But that night it hit me completely differently, because after everything that this president has done, it is against every Christian value that these Christians claim to hold. And I'm the one they're calling a sinner. That Sunday morning, I felt like I had a scarlet D on my chest. I felt truckloads of holy condemnation everywhere I looked. Uh, one particular person barely spoke to me. Her brother was the first one to comment on my post the night before. And then that afternoon, I was publicly blasted on Facebook for unfriending somebody who basically accused me of being against God. This this type of godly hypocrisy makes me insane because because when my daughter's black boyfriend attended our church I could feel the silent stares and I know this for a fact because I've been around these members of the congregation when they've spouted out homophobic and racial slurs just in casual conversation I, I go on with this long diatribe because people like me with anxiety and depression, events like this are soul crushing. I mean, the rejection I felt had me considering ending my life.
not because I thought I was a sinner. Not not because of that at all. But because the people that I had felt spiritually connected to felt that way. Absorbing negativity is not a big leap for someone like me. Being bipolar also means that I'm very much in my feelings. The intensity of my emotions can go from calm to panic within minutes. And I could already feel the public condemnation of what I had done, of my sins. My husband would be fired from the church. We'd lose our church-provided housing. All because I just had to exercise my First Amendment right to free speech. And then what school is going to want some godless baby killer to teach their sheltered children? There goes my 10 years of teaching gone. And my family, they'd be better off without me. I mean, what could I bring them but just more disappointment? I had everything I needed in my nightstand drawer, including my Xanax, along with other depression and anxiety medications that I took on a daily basis. I had five or six pills in my hand, and I knew that if I swallowed them that I couldn't hesitate and I would have to take the rest right after. I mean, God forbid I wake up in a hospital or I put myself in such a position that my husband has to take care of me for the rest of our miserable wedded lives. No. If I was going to do it, I was going to do it right. But the longer I sat there, the more that reason and sanity came back. I put the pills back in the bottle and I stewed in my own misery over my Facebook scandal and the fact that I couldn't control my emotions. This isn't the first time that these thoughts have come into my psyche and it certainly won't be the last. The scary part is how easy it took me to get there. But I was lucky enough to have some positive force pull me back from the brink. And the thoughts of further pain to my family and the fact that my soul was not ready for the sure and swift judgment it would face. And thoughts of my friends that didn't get to come back from the edge. My fear is at what point do these forces and their powers stop? That's what I go through every day. The battles are won, but the war never ends. It never ends.